Hello, I'm Zoe Briggs and this is Buckingham News. Workers at the Didcot power station in Oxfordshire were preparing two boilers for demolition on Tuesday when the 10 to 12 ton building collapsed unexpectedly. Killing one person with three others still unaccounted for, Owen Hughes was at the scene. At least one person has died and three others are still missing after the partial collapse of a building at the Didcot A power plant in Oxfordshire at around 4pm on Tuesday. Four others were injured and were treated at the John Radcliffe Hospital. The men were prepping the site for demolition when part of the steel and concrete structure collapsed. As well as emergency services from Thames Valley Police and South Central Ambulance, between 50 and 60 firefighters from Oxfordshire, Buckinghamshire, Hampshire and the West Midlands were at the scene of the incident. Specialist teams from urban search and rescue areas are carrying out a systematic search of the rubble for any signs of life. My thoughts were the families of those affected, particularly the loved ones who have died or are still missing. We expect the search to continue throughout the night and possibly into the coming days. There is a specialist rescue and command support unit at the scene and urban search and rescue units from Buckinghamshire, Hampshire and West Midlands, including search dogs. The fire service being supported by South Central Ambulance and also Thames Valley Police. Dust from the collapse covered a consider considerable area but I would like to reassure the public that there is no hazardous materials within the building, that this is not being treated as a terrorist incident. A health and safety executive will be investigating over the next few weeks to determine what it was exactly that went so wrong that has cost at least one person their life. This is Owen Hughes for Buckingham News. There have been numerous reports of bank cards being cloned within Buckingham. Residents have had personal details stolen as well as money being taken from accounts across the town. Cameron Hawtrey went to find out what's really happening to our private information. Buckingham is usually a safe place to shop, travel and feel comfortable whilst using your bank cards to make purchases. Locals don't often have to worry about their details being stolen like many people in larger towns and cities do. But in the past two weeks alone, there have been over 20 reported cases of card cloning taking place. The majority of those affected were told by their banks that their details were stolen at the fast pump quick checker option at the Buckingham Tesco petrol station. Individuals have had money taken from their accounts, some cards have been instantly blocked due to unrecognised transactions, and now, many are choosing to avoid paying by card altogether until the situation is resolved. With technology constantly developing and supposedly making transactions simpler and more convenient, we're left wondering if these modernised methods are easier for criminals to tamper with. Tesco have now taken action stating, We now use special pay-at-pump security test cards every morning to ensure the pumps aren't tampered with overnight. I suspect it probably is, is something called card skimming. They would probably put in some kind of a camera so that um, they can see uh, your PIN number being entered. It's often very difficult for authorities to catch those responsible for these types of crimes, as information can be taken in an instant with the details erased as soon as the culprit is satisfied. Fortunately, these incidents don't happen often in Buckingham, and machines that have been tampered with are quickly removed. The stolen money is also returned to the victim with little delay, but it certainly creates a frightening and inconvenient issue for those affected. This is Cameron Hawtrey, Buckingham News. The Buckingham and District Local Police Area released figures last week that revealed more than 20 robberies from motor vehicles in January alone. Burglary and drugs usage were the two main priorities outlined in the report, as Joanna Lynn investigates. 23 reports of theft from motor vehicles were reported in Buckingham and District Neighbourhood, update for February, which was released by the Ellsbury Division of Thames Valley Police last week. An extremely large number of incidents are happening 24 hours a day, according to the report, which provided advice on removal of sadness, valuables and tools from vehicles in order to reduce the risk of becoming a victim. In a statement given to Buckingham News, Sergeant Emily Dober reassured locals. She said, Buckingham and District Neighbourhood policing team carry out a target operation and residents will have been aware of the increase in police patrols at the time. Crime prevention advice was also shared with people living, working and visiting Buckingham and District to enable them to best protect their property. 
But with the figures released in the LPA report, do the people of Buckingham feel safe leaving their cars parked around the town? I would be very concerned about leaving my car here overnight. Um, no, I wouldn't feel safe leaving my car here. I've heard of a lot of deaths recently, so I'd rather just park my car near me where I know it's around and it's safe. I keep my car at home. And it's very sad these days that people are stealing other people's cars, but that's life today. The police are urging people to leave their cars clear and tidy overnight and to be vigilant at all times. This is journaling for Buckingham News. In other news, this week marked the end of a record students' union raising give week geared towards raising money for great causes. The union was able to raise a grand total of £1,953.61, which has been the highest collection to date. The proceeds will be donated to the Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital Charity and to the British Red Cross. Originally told he had five years to live over 30 years ago, Mr John McCafferty of Newport, Pagnon, Buckinghamshire, became the longest surviving heart transplant patient until he passed away at the age of 73 earlier this month. Honorary graduate of the university, Sir Magdi Yacoub, performed the heart transplant on Mr McCafferty at the Harfield Hospital in West London on the 20th of October 1982. This week saw the 24th Annual National Chip Week, a celebration dreamt up by the Potato Council to encourage the consumption of something we already eat in large quantities. Let's face it, every week is like National Chip Week and the British love their chips. Nicole Mazzini has a story. National Chip Week is celebrated every year on the 16th of February until the 23rd. The British fondness for the chip dates back hundreds of years. The potato came to England in the 17th century by Sir Walter Raleigh. Chips were cheap staple food of the industrial north, while its famous friend the fried fish was introduced in London's East End. Chips are no longer loyal to just fish. They've gone on to strengthen partnerships and other dishes, alongside steaks, burgers and kebabs. Whether they're skinny, fat, chunky, French or curly, 87% of the population love their chips. But what is Buckingham's favourite? A proper chip shop chip. A proper English chip shop chip. Preferably from the chip shop, and it's got to be with salt, isn't it? And McCain's curly edge chips, oven chips. Sweet potato chip. Whether it's smothered in salt and doused in vinegar, wrapped in newspaper and eaten outdoors on a cold wintry day, it simply cannot be beaten. This is Nicole Mazzini for Buckingham News. Keen litters from the town get together every Thursday afternoon at Buckingham Library to knit twiddle off sensory leaves for the dementia wards at Milton Keynes Hospital. The group was started by the library two years ago and is still going strong today. Laura Hughes has the story. Since the start of the Knit and Natter group, many people have donated spare wool, buttons and ribbons to make twiddle muff sensory sleeves for the dementia wards at Milton Keynes Hospital. They are not only used by the dementia patients but by other people such as stroke victims. Recently, the group were able to deliver their first batch of 40 to the lead dementia team. Twiddle muffs are hand-knitted muffs which have been specially designed with the addition of buttons, beads, ribbons and zips to provide simple stimulation for active hands. Having something to twiddle with can have a calming effect on a person who has dementia. The stimulation twiddle muffs provide can really add to an individual's quality of life. The group members meet at Buckingham Library every Thursday from 1.30pm. All knitting abilities are welcome. While the Knit and Natter group gather in a social area over tea, their aim is to have fun whilst working towards a goal in a supportive environment. We started meeting twice a week, once a week in the library and once a week in the old Red Cross building. And we got a request to make um, little tiny cribs and miniature bonnets and booties for premature babies and then little wraps for babies that didn't make it. We are hoping to apply for a grant from the round table to see whether they can supply us with some money so that we can buy the wool. This is an ongoing project aimed at dementia patients. Each patient gets to take home their own personal twiddle muff on discharge. The Knit and Natter group provide everything you need to take part and encourage anyone that still have odd balls of wool or other bits that can be attached to the finished cuffs to be donated to the Buckingham Library. So why not bring your knitting needles and pop by for some fun and natter, all for a good cause. This is Laura Hughes for the Buckingham News. Now over to sports with Philip Joss. Thank you Zoe. A good number of students have started going to the gym late in the evening, often exercising beyond 10pm. Scott Stanley went to find out why so many students are hitting the gym instead of the hay. 
Regular exercise reduces stress and anxiety. Students usually have a busy schedule, which limits the hours in the day for a good workout. But exercising so close to lights out may cause problems getting to sleep. Maybe there are a lot of people in the gym in the night, you know, because everyone is done with classes. Mainly because it fits into my routine, so I get home from school, I'll be able to do homework and then be able to get out to the gym as well. Because I have classes during the day and when I walk out, I feel tired, so and I need to start my day strong. 73% of people aged between 16 and 24 practice sport at least four times a week. Students at Buckingham can have up to nine hours of lectures and seminar per week, not including additional study time. This leaves little room for working out and keeping up with their personal fitness and well-being. Certainly if you have a need or if you need to be out of bed, say 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning, again I wouldn't advise intense exercise late at night because it's going to stimulate your sympathetic nervous system so you're not going to be able to sleep for a good few hours afterwards. Many students can be found working out late in the evenings in the gym. While this does affect sleeping routines, that's a sacrifice that students are willing to make to keep track of their personal fitness and well-being. I'm Scott Stanley reporting from Buckingham News. The studio at the Buckingham Sports Union is home to many different activities including the ancient martial arts practice of Tai Chi, Tai Chi is an ancient relaxation technique that's known to have many health benefits. Dee Dee Frank tried it out for herself. Originally developed as martial art in 13th century China, Tai Chi is today practiced around the world as a health promoting exercise. The University of Buckingham offers Tai Chi class for students, staff, as well as outside participants. The external instructor, Elaine, with her 15 years experience, teaches several sessions every Thursday from 12 to 4 p.m. Tai Chi helps to reduce stress, improve balance and general mobility. The classes on Thursdays vary from beginners to regular members. It's the training for the martial art is done very slowly in a completely controlled way so as to build up um, coordination and flexibility and all the other things that you would expect from a martial art. Mm -hmm. But it's what's known as an internal martial art. And those training methods have really good implications for health and well-being. Practicing this passive martial art is an advantage to everyday well-being. It is a sport that generally benefits everyone. This is Eddie Dion Frank reporting for Buckingham News. The University of Buckingham's football club played another batch against Steeple Claydon on Saturday. Could they secure a much-needed win against the team who were only one point ahead in the league? Tim Richards was at the match. The match started off with Buckingham having most of the possession but conceded a goal in the first half through a defensive error. Buckingham instantly replied with a well-placed shot from Tower inside the box and scored another right before half-time. With Steeple Claydon one goal behind in the second half, Buckingham were looking strong, but because of the unfavourable weather conditions, a goal was conceded early in the second half, which brought the game to an even level. After constant end-to-end -end football from both teams, Stiefel Claydon scored the winning goal in the last moments of the match, bringing the final score to 3-2. First half, um, we hit the post twice, we missed really good chances, and then in the end it didn't, uh, it wasn't enough to, to get the win. A player from the UOB team and Stiefel Claydon were both red carded after the game for disorderly conduct, giving them each a three-match ban. Um, after the match was a really bad situation, um, someone was racially abused, um, which was not funny at all. There was a big fight, um, but now we have uh, put in an official uh, report, so it says that uh, it mentions what happens, and the league is dealing with the situation now. Um, some of our players might have to give uh, some statements. This defeat now means that Buckingham have dropped to 12th place in the league table. This is Timothy Richards reporting for Buckingham News. And now, back to the studio. According to new findings by the Youth Charity Central, YMCA, unemployment is the biggest fear for Britain's young people. Do Buckingham students share the same feelings as the majority of the country? Lisa Collins went to investigate. A recently published article by the Huffington Post has detailed statistics of the main fears shared by those aged 16 to 21 in the UK. The top concern is the possibility of being unemployed and never reaching a level in a career that can provide a sustainable income. 
The results were compiled into an index with the most common responses receiving a score of 100. Unemployment topped the list with a score of 100, followed by the education system limiting achievement at 92, and body-related issues coming in at third with a score of 86. I'm worried about getting a job after university because um, the economy isn't doing well and there is a lot of competition. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a pretty good degree coming out at the end of it, I think, and I, I think we should be able to use it to get decent jobs. Uh, thankfully with medicine, there's a lot of options available and a lot of backups as well if required. No, personally I'm not scared about being unemployed after university. Um, I feel that I would get onto a business graduate scheme um, when I finish my degree. Buckingham University provides many opportunities for students to try and reduce their concerns of becoming unemployed. The Career Service holds a series of employability seminars and workshops to help support and improve skills needed to earn a job as well as, as many academic skills meetings that aim to improve overall productivity and personal success. Having a good degree won't, alone won't get you a job. You need work experience, you need um, those extra soft skills and core skills added to it along with some work experience. Fear of unemployment will always remain a top concern for young people in the UK. But with reassuring help and advice being given on a regular basis, this fear can certainly be reduced and instead be turned into motivation for success. This has been Lisa Collins for Buckingham News. The Buckingham Radcliffe Centre played host to a lecture from Nick Bailey, Chief Executive of ISOBAR UK. He discussed many areas of the advertising industry including gender equality as well as new and emerging changes prompted by the digital generation. Cameron Hawtrey has a story. Nick Bailey, named by Adweek as one of the top 10 creative minds in the digital era, visited Buckingham's Radcliffe Centre to host a lecture focusing on diversity and gender within the advertising industry. The talk discussed how advertising and communication industries exist to change the way we think, feel and behave in relation to brands, products and services. It also covered the specifics of female minority in the workplace and the steps taken to bring equality to advertising. I don't, I don't think the advertising industry is broken, but I yeah. think there are tensions within it. And I think that's a function of the fact that really there is no such thing as an advertising industry anymore. There are lots of creative businesses that have come from a different uh, origin and a different genesis. Nick Bailey was part of an initiative known as Glass Lion that aims to expand gender equality in the workplace, and in particular, the advertising industry. Here, only 10% of those in the senior rank are female. He shared his experiences of his first year working with Glass Lion, a new category at the Cannes Lions Film Festival of Creativity, which sought to award work which was progressive in its representation of gender. The Glass Lion is one of a number of initiatives going on in advertising at the moment, driving uh, the agenda, I suppose, around diversity. It's evident that there's positive changes taking place within the advertising industry. As someone who's very experienced in the area, Nick has been key in positively mediating between the business and its audience. This is Cam Hawtrey, Buckingham News. The Chinese Student Association hosted their annual Chinese New Year celebration last Friday in the Radcliffe Centre. The event played host to a night of musical performance, food and celebration. Karen Iigwe was there. The Chinese New Year event began at 6.30pm with over 100 guests filing in and queuing for the complimentary food and drinks. By 7, everyone was settling down for a night of performances to celebrate 2016's Year of the Monkey. Lucky draws were held and some fortunate students were able to walk away with red packets full of money while an iPad mini was even up for grabs. I think it's a very special day for Chinese people and especially for the families, we can stay together and just celebrate it. The Chinese students regaled the packed audience through the evening with singing, dancing and videos. The festivities continued until 2am at the after party in the OTM. Chinese New Year is celebrated over the course of the lunar month. So if you have a Chinese friend, don't hesitate to go up to them and greet them sing Ye Kuali. This is Karen Yogre, Buckingham News. Buckingham County Council has issued a list of household waste items that they can no longer process. Aerosols, batteries, oils and textiles have all been listed by the council. Talamaza went to find out more. Buckinghamshire County Council recently published a list of items that residents should not put in their regular household waste bin. 
Garden waste, recyclable materials such as cardboard and glass bottles and even animal carcasses over 6 kilograms were cited by the council. These items can cause all kinds of significant damage for the new energy waste plant in Calvert which simply cannot handle the extra items. It's uh, designed to burn um, residual waste, uh, so we don't want to uh, reduce our recycling rates. Uh, so we people need to be encouraged to uh, still recycle cans and metal and stuff because obviously metal doesn't burn, so it's a waste of time going through the incinerator. The news comes in light of the fact that Buckinghamshire already recycles around 57% of its entire waste. However, the aim is to increase that even further up to 60%. This means that residents are already reusing more than they throw away, including taking responsibility for transporting appropriate items to waste, recycling centres themselves. I think it's a lot better than it used to be. A few years ago, it all used to go into the bin, and now it does go into a couple of different bins. And the council are quite good at giving us the different boxes to recycle in, but since I've moved abroad, it's been a bit more difficult. I've got things that I'd, I'm not sure if they would go in the dustbin, then I'll take them up to the tip and recycle them up there. I, I, hate, I can't bear the thought of people throwing things on the countryside. The councils are charged per tonne of waste sent to the landfill under the landfill tax. Now it's up to the general public to recycle their trash even more. This is Talha Mirza, Buckingham News. Nominations for this year's Buckinghamshire Food and Drink Awards are quickly drawing to a close. Whether it's for Restaurant of the Year or even Best Artisan Bakery, nominations are still being sought. Elisa Lee has more on the story. With this thriving restaurants, characterful pubs and plenty of other esteemed establishment, the Buckinghamshire Food and Drink Awards seeks to honour and praise the very best on offer around the county. Last year's winner of the Best Farmer's Market Store Holder was Buckingham's very own open-air foods, a small family business renowned for its unique artisan foods. Uh, it was a great honour to be, to be nominated uh, for the first time that they've run the, uh, the awards. Definitely helpful um, to, to get extra trade in and to sort of uh, get our name out across the, the whole of uh, Buckinghamshire. Um, and it's also really nice to have that um, uh, sheet print out of saying that we are the best store holder in the whole of Buckinghamshire, so very good. If you know a business in the county that deserves recognition, simply visit the Buckingham Food and Drink Awards website before the 7th of March to submit your nomination. I'm Melissa Lee for Buckingham News. Thank you for watching Buckingham News. We'll see you next week.